This is a Spree Model Network TV and you're watching How To Jetty Programming. Today I'm joined with James who's going to go ahead and show us a little bit more on how to program your Jetty Duplex 2.4 transmitter. Hi guys, James with Esprit Model Jetty USA and today we're going to talk about the Central Box 200. Uh, we get a lot of questions, we get a lot of calls about setting up the CB200 with the R3 receivers or with satellite receivers, so we wanted to answer some of those questions. Uh, one of the biggest things that we run into is that people are forgetting or neglecting to update their R3s to the latest firmware. You need to always make sure before you try and set up a central box in order for that to work, the R3s need to be on at least 3.2. Um, so make sure that you're going in and you're checking the firmware. So I'm going to go ahead and start kind of an out of the box setup. I've already updated our two R3 receivers. Uh, so that's a step we're not going to show. If you need to know how to do that, go to our YouTube page and check out our video for updating your Jetty Duplex receiver. That'll walk you through all the steps that you need to do that. Uh, so we're going to start out by setting this up to bind each of the R3s. Those need to be bound separately. Uh, you do that in the radio. So we're going to go to Menu. We're going to go to Advanced Properties and we're going to go to Wireless Modes Trainer. You want to set the mode to Double Path. Uh, once you've done that, you're all set up so you can pair the uh, receivers to the radio. Um, another thing you want to do is actually set your alarm at loss of any receiver, which we already have here, so we're good for that. We're going to go to pair primary transmitter module. We're going to take either of your two R3s. We're going to go ahead and insert the bind plug into the EXT port of the receiver. And we're going to use a standard receiver pack to power that receiver. So you want to make sure that you've, once you've got that set up, make sure you're watching your polarity as well. Really important, obviously. So I'm going to set that up. I'm going to click on pair primary module. It's going to ask me if I really want to receive this, receive, use this receiver. It sees it. I'm going to say yes. Go ahead and pop that bind plug out and unplug that receiver. We're going to set that aside. Take your second R3. You're going to hear the alarm going there. Go ahead and just turn your volume down or ignore it. It's going to go on in for a, a few of the steps as we go through this. I'm going to go ahead and put the bind plug in the second receiver. I'm going to go ahead and power that second receiver the same way. I am going to scroll down to pair second transmitter module and I'm going to click that. It sees it. It asks me if I really want to use it. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to go ahead and pull the bind plug out of that receiver and unplug it. Now your radio is going to continue to chirp at you. You can ignore that uh, as we go through the, uh, the next steps. Now you want to set up your central box and your R3 receivers all together. On the central box we're going to use RX1 and RX2 ports that are on the receiver itself or on the CB itself. So we're going to plug two male-to-male -male servo connectors into those two ports. Then we're going to connect our R3s using our port 3. So we will connect those. One and two. I'm going to go ahead and connect your switch. Now I'm using the version with the magnetic switch. You can also set this up to use with a version uh, with the R3 wireless switch. Um, not how I chose to set this particular one up. Your switch always plugs into the port labeled switch. Again, watch your polarity. Make sure you match that up. But in this case, we're just going to be using the magnetic switch for our activation. I am going to add power into any of our open ports. Again, watching our polarity. And we're going to use our magnetic key to power our system up. Now we powered it up, 
it stopped chirping at us, which means it's seeing our two receivers. Uh, it's still not getting signal out from the central box because there's another step that we need to do to get that. Uh, what you're going to do is we're going to go ahead and exit out of our wireless modes and trainer all the way back to the entry screen. We're going to go into menu, model, device explorer, and here you'll see your two R your 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 two R3s and an R3 RC switch setup. Sorry about that. Uh, you'll notice you don't yet see your central box. So what we're going to do, click on our first R3. We're going to, in the serial link, we're going to click on that. We're going to change that to EX bus. I'm going to click on OK or click on the center button. Apply changes. We're going to click Yes. We're going to hit Exit. Exit again, and we're going to jump back into Device Explorer again. Uh, one thing we forgot to do is we want to go ahead and go down to our fail safe uh, under our R3. We want to change our fail safe to disabled. We're going to click OK. And we want to go down to our second R3. We want to set the same condition. So we're going to set that up as EX bus as well. We're going to click apply changes. We're going to click yes. And we're going to change fail safe settings to disabled. And we're going to escape out of that twice. And let's see, where are we at here? We definitely want to device bar, fail safe select. Got everything set up there. Oh, you know what? I know what we did, so bear with me just a moment. If this happens to you and you're not seeing the CB200 after you change the EX bus, check your ports on your receivers. Uh, unless you've plugged those into the EXT port, it will not see the central box. It will not recognize it. Uh, one of the areas that, and you notice we just got a telemetry warning basically back from the system because we took the receivers off-site. And there we go. We've got the receivers plugged in. See all three receivers, both receivers and the central box 200. Uh, so we're all set up to make changes and program in the central box itself. Um, once you've got that set up, you can actually scroll to CB200, select it, and it'll load your options for the CB200. Uh, we we want to set up our fail safe, of course, as this is set up in this section. Um, set our output period to auto. Uh, we're going to do our mapping here. We're going to take care of all of our general settings here. Uh, output period's already in auto, so we don't need to make a change there. Escape back to the previous menu. Go to your servo fail safes. You want to make sure that it's an enabled. I always leave it at 1.5 seconds, and you also set your output pins here. Um, you can change them from hold to auto off to fail safe, which is where you set a value. Uh, if you're running a fuel model or a gas powered model and you want to set a throttle value, it'll set you to cut off. Here's where you do that. Uh, otherwise, you set them to out or off. Uh, that'll bring those uh, to, an, to an off position. Uh, you can also set them to a value on your servos if you want them at 1.5 milliseconds or whatever your centers are. You'll need to go through your model and, and set those up individually. Um, you can figure your output ports also from here. And one of the things you're going to want to do, if you're going to use ports 14 and 15 uh, to, to run servo outputs, those ports will need to be changed to servo output. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to central box 200, servo output mapping check the mapping and make sure we've got everything set up the way we want it. We do. Uh, telemetry and also set here. Output pin configuration is also set here. So those are where you go through and change the functions. Uh, if you see pin 14, point pin 14, pin 15 are both set up currently as servo output, which is what you would want if you want to use those ports. Uh, nothing else we need to do to set my model. 
but that's your basic setup on the Central Box 200. If you have any questions or there's anything that you'd like to see, of course, you can always reach out to us. Um, we're going to take just a second and shut this down. I'll be right back. I want to show you a, uh, a finished board and how the uh, product operates. All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, just wanted to give you an idea how the system works. This board is set up with the R3 as an R3, uh, or set up as the RC switch, rather. Um, so it's not using the magnetic switch. I know you see it in frame, but it's actually there just to hold the place. Uh, so with this one, we've set up the R3 uh, as a remote switch, activated from the radio. Uh, so we're going to flip the switch. It says, turn this model on. I say yes. And we've wired an LED in so you can see that the system's live. Um, and you see that we actually have the system set up. We've programmed the outputs on the central box to operate those receivers. And we have set it up with a uh, sequencer set up uh, in the system so that we actually uh, can, can demo the, uh, the options of the radio. Uh, but that's functionality of the Central Box 200. I'm glad you guys joined us today. If you have any questions, reach out to us at sales at espreemodel.com or give us a call either at espreemodel.com or JettyUSA. Uh, again, this is James, and thanks for joining us.